Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Zach and I am a, amongst other things, a jouster and a reenactor. Um, today I'm going to be talking about one of the many mistakes that I have made as a reenactor in the past. And the particular mistake that I'm going to be talking about today is the mistake of asking someone if they want to trial my equipment or feel the weight of my sword or helmet or whatever it is. Uh, now you might think, actually, isn't that the point of reenacting? And yes, to a certain extent, we are there to educate. But um, the issue comes where actually that act of getting them to try out the equipment doesn't actually help in the education. Um, now the clearest example of this is in swords. As reenactors we um, have weapons which are blunted specifically so that we don't end up killing each other. Um, and yes, we can't hand over sharp weapons to four-year-olds. Um, so we find ourselves in a sticky situation. We're there to share history with them, to educate, um, but we have equipment that is necessarily um, not an exact copy of original equipment. The issue is also a problem when it comes to weapon uh, to armor as well, because very often the people that we are sharing our armor with, showing them and letting them try it on, are going to be completely the wrong size and shape for that particular armor. Even with a museum quality replica, if they're not the right size and shape for that armor, they will struggle to move in it. Uh, they might find it chafing if they're not wearing the proper arming uh, garments and so on. So we find ourselves in a situation where actually as an educator and um, in sharing history and doing living history, we're actually perpetuating some myths by handing over equipment that is unsuitable for that particular task. Um, now, it's easier to solve the sword problem than the armor problem. Uh, for, with the sword problem, most reenactors over time just start collecting swords or other weapons. So um, I bought a another sword, which uh, is not sharp, but is a much closer weight um, to the originals. So it's possible to hand it over. Obviously couldn't use it on a reenactment battlefield, it's not safe enough for that, but it is safe enough to hand to a member of the public um, with proper um, supervision. And so this sword is basically for parade and for education purposes. It's to help with the living history aspect of things because it's much more um, correct than my um, reenactment safe blade. This particular sword I bought from a friend so I'm not actually too sure where the original um, sword came from. Uh, I think he bought it through Armour Bohemia but I think that um, their smiths, uh, they use multiple smiths. As far as the, the sword is concerned it's great and if you're looking for something similar to help improve um, your uh, education possibilities, then uh, they do do really nice swords. I have actually had a different one from them for exactly the same purpose in the past as well. Um, so that's easier. Obviously, we can't find someone who is um, the same size and shape as us to, in every group of people to allow them to try on our armor. That's just not going to work. And so for a while I had issues with the idea of it and whether we should actually be asking people whether they want to try it on or not. Um, I'm still not entirely sure I know the answer because as much as we would say to someone, oh, well, actually, if it was made for you, it would work so much better and you wouldn't feel so heavy. As human beings, we rate our experiences above what people tell us. So if at five years old we try on a piece of armour and it is super, super heavy 
and we can't move in it at all, then we will remember that armor is heavy and you can't move in it much more than we will remember the guy said that actually if it was made for me it would be fine. One possibility would be to have other armor made in different sizes. No one's that I've spoken to has got the desire or the budget for that. So that's uh, basically out and that that's probably actually the province of um, museum education departments should really be doing that sort of thing. But as reenactors maybe something that can help would be to ask questions rather than tell facts. Now this is another principle of education which is if someone comes to a conclusion themselves then that will stick with them far longer than if they are just told something. So um, I have a young son who is almost two years old and he has yet to be stung by a stinging nettle um, and very very soon I'm sure he will be because no matter how often we tell him stay away from these plants he keeps going back to them. I am pretty sure that once he has been stung by them he is going to stay away. For those of you who aren't um, aren't aware of what stinging nettles are they're, um, they're just weeds that grow everywhere in the UK and uh, as the name suggests they sting you. Anyway the experience of something or coming to a conclusion yourself this is painful will stick with you much longer so asking questions can provide that learning opportunity where someone comes to that conclusion themselves. Um, so an example would be um, why do you think I can wear this armour? So the uh, the members of the public try it on. They go, oh, this is heavy. This this is difficult for me to move in. So yeah, okay. So why do you think you can't move in it, but I can? And that will allow them to tread the path towards the conclusion that we want them to come to, and it will stick with them much longer than just me saying, oh, but I can do it fine. Um, the uh, the obviously the path we want to go them to go along is I find it difficult to move in this armor that person doesn't that armor was made for them therefore if I had armor made for me I would find it easier to move in it obviously we also need to stay away from the trap of um, debusting a myth too hard uh, Maybe I'll do another video on that. You know, we don't want people to go away thinking, oh, armor is fine and you can move perfectly in it and it doesn't impede movement at all. That is going too far the other way. And that's another mistake that I think I have made in the past. So maybe we'll talk about that another time. But yeah, um, doing that, being able to uh, ask questions to lead someone to a, um, a conclusion you want them to make is much more effective than just simply telling them and it's much more effective at, um, at taking away the disparity between um, experience, experienced knowledge and knowledge that they've been taught. So uh, simple, if you're a reenactor and you like people to come and um, hold your swords, get yourself a blade that is not sharp, but also um, not a reenactment blade. So then you can show someone what a real weighted sword is like. Second thing would be, if you do want someone to try on your helmet, um, do make sure that you ask them questions until they come to the correct conclusion that, uh, uh, that helmets are not ridiculously heavy, that, you know, it's not their five-year-old fell over not because you can't move in chainmail, but because the five-year-old is wearing a chainmail shirt sized for a 30-year-old. Anyway, thanks for coming along. Thanks for listening to this. If you're a reenactor and you feel like you've made some mistakes in the past, um, do leave a comment below. Tell me what they are. Um, I'll be doing a series on this uh, mistakes that I've made. 
I'm also doing a series on my harness and armour and talking about all the different parts and what I've learned over um, ooh, 12 years, I think now, of wearing full plate armour. So um, do watch out for that. Like and subscribe. Um, any comments or questions, leave them down below. It would be really, really appreciated. Thank you very much. Thank you for dropping by and I'll see you soon.